I'm now at the point where I'm going to install the HQ CUCM and then we'll move on to some of the other servers afterwards. But right now I can't install the HQ CUCM in the way that I want to because it's not going to be able to contact the DNS server. So if we go under virtual machines and we take a look at our DNS server here, we only have the one NIC for it. I'm now going to go ahead and add the other NICs by going into edit, add network adapter. I'm going to add the other ones as well right now because I need to have the network adapters for each VLAN at each site. So for HQ, we're going to have three. That's going to be the servers, the voice VLAN and the data VLAN. Then for site B, we're going to have three as well. And then for site C, we'll have three. And for Backbone, we'll have three as well. And now I'll just go through and select these. We'll do the HQ first, Data HQ, Server VLAN HQ, Voice VLAN HQ. And I'll pause the recording while I do the other ones now. Now I have all of these VLANs added. I'll click Save. It looks like the number of virtual devices exceeds the maximum for a given controller. So let's see what we didn't get. We didn't get any of them, it looks like. So I'll add the network adapter. I won't do the Backbone ones. I'll just do, uh, I'll set up a different server for Backbone. But I'll pause this recording while I set everything up again. All right, we have everything added back now, minus the Backbone network adapters. And now that I click save, it says that everything was successfully reconfigured. Now I'll power the server back on. Then I'll connect to the server and do the rest of the configurations from there. I'll actually connect to the, the ESXi from my RDP session to this server that I just powered on. And then once I'm connected there, we'll deploy the virtual machine for the HQ CUCM. Now I've launched the RDP session and I got into my network connections in order to change the adapter settings. And this will be HQ, 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 Site B, Site B, Site B, Site C, Site C, Site C. And the order will be data server voice. I'll go in here to the data and we'll do properties. And then we'll go to IPv4 and I'll say use the following, the, the data network for HQ is 192.168.112. And what I'll do for each of these is I'll set their last octet to 18. That's going to be for the HQ voice, HQ data, HQ server, site B, all of the same for that, and site C as well. Everything will end in dot one eight. The subnet mask is a slash 24, and the default gateway is something that I'll actually need to confirm real quick. So we'll just fire up MOBA X term, and we'll hop in the lab router. We're looking for... 112. So right here, everything is in, everything ends in dot one. All right. So 192, 168, 112, one. I'll set the preferred DNS server here to be my IP address that the server knows, which is uh, dot one dot 86, I believe. Let's take a look here. Yep. 192, 168, one dot 86. And now that that's saved, Let's see if we start getting any packets here. I'll see if I can ping the router. Ping 192.168.112.1. And isn't that a beautiful site? It doesn't always work. What I'll do now is I'll go and put the appropriate IP addresses on all the other NICs, and I'll pause the recording while I do that. I'm resuming the recording real quick while I put in this IP address because you get an error message about having multiple default gateways. Um, I actually didn't mean to save that. I'm going to remove it. What, what we can do down the road, well, first off, the default gateway for the other NIC can be used for these other ones as well, right? So the, the first one that we put in, the HQ data subnet, the default gateway there, if traffic to these other VLANs goes to that default gateway, it's fine because that default gateway knows what to do with it. That's because we set up the inter VLAN routing on it. The other thing is if I run into problems with things not routing properly or not routing the way that I want them to, I can go into the command line 
on the Windows server and put in static routes telling it, okay, for this traffic, I want you to send it to this device. For that traffic, send it to this other device. And with that said, I'm not going to put any other default gateways on these other, other NICs. We'll just click OK here, click OK again. I'll pause the recording while I do the rest of these. At this point, all the IP addresses have been added to the different interfaces, and I've tested pings to each one of them, or at least pings to each one of their default gateways, and those pings were successful as well. Now I'll jump into my ESXi host, and fire up Firefox, and then I'll log in here. Now that we've done a good amount on the Windows Server, I'm actually going to take a snapshot of this before doing other stuff. So I'll go to Snapshots, Take Snapshot, and I'll pause the recording for a moment while I do this. I named it Network Adapters, DNS, DHCP, and I uncheck this box, Take Snapshot. That is done now. I want to go over to Storage. I'm going to browse to the Data Store, and I'll go into where the ISO files are. I'm now going to upload some ISO files for CUCM, IMMP, and also Expressway. To do so, I have to click on Upload, browse to wherever I have my software, and then I have to upload the software files that I have. Currently, the, the collaboration CCIE is on version 12, which presents the problem of licensing. So what I intend on doing is putting a license file on the prime license manager for 11.5, and then I'll take a snapshot once everything is licensed, having you know my, my base installation files or snapshots, whatever you want to call them. Then I'll, I'll upgrade it to version 12, and I'll do all of my labbing on version 12 until the, the demo license runs out. And once the demo license runs out, I'll revert back to the snapshot that I have for 11.5 and do the upgrade again. That way I don't have to go through all the installations or anything else. I just have to revert back to a snapshot and run the, run the upgrade file and then let it do its thing. And I come back and I'll be on the proper version with a demo license that I don't have to worry about running out and then doing a full fresh install again. All right, so I will select my CCM file. I wonder if I can do more than one at a time. I cannot. So I'll just upload these different files here. And then after that's done, we'll go into creating the virtual machines. With my ISO files uploaded, I'll close this out and I'll go over here to where it has virtual machines and we'll say create register virtual machine. I'm going to choose the option to deploy an OVF or an OVA file. I'll say next. For this, it will be HQ, HQ CUCM pub. Now let's find our OVA file. I'm doing this one here, CUCM 11.5 VM8, version 1.1 OVA. We'll go ahead with this data store. And I'll thin provision, I don't want to thick provision. For the ETH zero, we want HQ, we'll do server VLAN HQ, and I'll leave that to its um, base settings. Actually, we'll ramp it up a little bit. We'll go with the 75,000, 7,500 user node, just in case later on down the road, if I want to do my upgrades, I might need this, um, you know, additional disk space. Let's see what we get down here. Nope, that's not going to change anything in terms of disk space. Let's make sure. Yeah, I just want to avoid the 80 gig. That's my big thing. 80 gig here as well. All right, we get up to 110. What do we have here? Still just one 110. So we'll have to go with the 7500 user in order to have the 110 gig space. I don't want to have disk space get in the way of upgrades to version 12 down the road. I'm not sure what this is. I've not seen that before, but that's fine. We'll click finish. And now we have two different virtual machines with our HQ one here. 
I don't believe that the ISO file was mapped though. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So I will power this off. What we'll do is go to edit for CD DVD drive here. We'll say data, data store ISO file. I'm going to be installing the CUCM. So we'll select that option. Then I'll click save. I might have forgotten to check that it should connect at power on. So we'll check that. Yeah, it looks like it. It is good. All right, let's power this on. And then when we launch the console, we should be able to, let's see, the address wasn't understood. Okay, so now because I'm working from my jump box, I don't have VMRC installed yet. I'll want to get that done. We'll do it for Windows since I'm on a Windows machine. I'll pause the recording while I get this done. Now that's installed, let's try it again. We'll launch the remote console. I want it to remember my choice for VMRC links. And now we're finally getting into the unified communication stuff. I'm going to say skip because I know this ISO file is good, or at least I trust that it's good. And even if it's not, so what? It's a lab environment. That is what I want. I'll hit tab and then I'll hit enter. Yes, that's what I want to install. We'll proceed. I don't want to apply a patch. I am going to do the basic install. I'm going to take this thing to New York. Okay. I don't want to change the MTU size. I don't want to configure DHCP on it either. We have HQ CUCM pub. That's what I remembered it being. I just didn't want to take any chances here. H click in here. HQ CUCM PUB. The IP address is going to be 110.5 will be the publisher. This will be 255.255.255.0 for a slash 24. And the default gateway is going to be 192.168.110.1. Say OK. I do want to enable it. The primary DNS is going to be 192.168.110.18. For the domain, it will be my pkname.com domain. Admin. Simple password. For my organization, I'm just going to have it be home. Okay. Yes, it is the first node in the cluster. Now here's the deal. It's going to ask us for an IP address of an NTP server. You could put a fully qualified domain name as well. However, the problem right now is that we don't have an NTP server. So we'll hop over to the router and we'll put in, and oh, I got to log in. It looks like Cisco. All right, so we'll do comp T and then we'll put in NTP server and I'll put in the IP address if this would let me. I'll put in the IP address of my Windows server and then I'll put in NTP master and I'll put in a, a two. Now, what does that do? That lets the router sync its NTP from my RDP, which I set up to sync it's NTP from the Google NTP server. So we know that that time on that server is accurate. So now the router is going to be getting time from, from an accurate source itself. But then I put in the command NTP master two. That makes our router become an NTP server and NTP servers, depending on where they are, that you know, you'll, you'll have a central source NTP server that's going to be uh, a certain stratum. And then the one that, that is connected to it will be a stratum higher, right? So this, this router stratum is going to be stratum two. And when the, the publisher that I'm installing right now syncs to this stratum two NTP server, the publisher will become an, an NTP server itself, but it will be a stratum three. I'll go ahead and close this out. And for the NTP server here, we'll put 192.168.110.1. I'll hit tab until I get down here. Put another simple password in there. I do not want to do SMTP. I don't want to enable smart call home. So 
So I put another simple username and simple password here. And now it lets me th know that the platform configuration is done. We'll, uh, we'll let this run and if I hit any issues, we'll, we'll start recording again and we'll talk about that. If I don't hit any issues, then we'll just log into the server and we'll, we'll make sure that we actually have the proper access that we need. The installation is now complete and I'll go ahead and try to log in here. Put in the wrong password. Let's wait for it to fail. Now that we can log in here, the installation of CUCM video is done. I'll go ahead and close this one out here and I'll see you in the next one.